There's nothing the enemy can do to stop what God has for you. There's nothing the enemy can do to stop what God has for you. Welcome to Woman Without Limits. My name is Reverend Kathy Kuna, as usual, your host. It's such a delight to have you welcome us right where you're watching us from. And I know tonight is going to be very, very special. You know, amazingly, many times you are broken to be made whole. And sometimes when you're going through a, a mighty situation, the Bible says that all things work together for good. For those who love the Lord, and for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, many times when we start off, it doesn't really look good. And you even wonder and ask yourself, what good can come out of this? Honestly, not having a house, not having any money, not having children, not having... Uh, <laughs> I mean, just having nothing. And, and you wonder, okay, God, you said it, it's going to work out for my good, but how? Because nothing just seems to add up. It doesn't make sense. I'm in pain for crying out loud. You know, and just it's just not adding up. But yet, the word of God is sure. When God says it will work out together for your good, in the beginning, you may not understand it. And right now, you're in pain. You're wondering how it will be good. But at the end of the tunnel, I promise you, there is a light. At the end of any dark tunnel, there is a light. And if you just hold on, if you look up to God, he is the author, he is the finisher. And what encourages me every day is to understand that God knows everything in between. He first finishes and then brings you to begin. So whatever it is that you're going through tonight, understand this. The Lord knows the final of it. So just endure, just, just, just go through it. But at the end of the day, you're going to smile and you're going to be a blessing. Tonight, we have this beautiful story. I tell you, it didn't start off in a beautiful way. Because this woman was absolutely broken. Absolutely broken. If you're there, why don't you welcome with me Winnie on set. Thank you. So hi, Winnie. Hi, Reverend Kadi. I paused if you're there, meaning you could be right there right now. Absolutely broken. So Winnie, I, uh, we want to hear who's Winnie, where are you coming from, and what, what are you all about? Uh, my name is um, Winnie Thuku Craig. Yes. Um, born and raised in Kabete, uh -huh. a place called Gikuni. I was um, born in a very poor family. Uh -huh. um, first born in a family of uh, four. I was actually born when my mom was not married. Okay. And then when I was about maybe one or two years old, mm -hmm. she got married and then she got married into this family that just rejected me. They did not accept me. Mm. So uh, from a very tender age, yeah. uh, I knew that nobody loved me because oh. I, I could see it. I mean, the, the adults, mm. they rejected me. The yeah. children, yeah. their children did not even play with me. 
So wow. I actually grew up in isolation mm. and my escape was uh, books. I loved books. I loved schools. I was always number one. Uh, wow. Come, I mean, class eight, I was, I was number one in our school. I topped in maths in the di whole division. So that was my escape, uh -huh. books. And even as I grew up, mm. um, I was still growing up in isolation. I did not want to mix with people because I had this fear in me that um, the people that are supposed to love me, who are my family members, don't care. They don't love me. Yeah. So if they don't love me, how do I expect a stranger mm. to love me? So um, that went on even after after high school. Um, I, I mean, uh, after college, yeah. I got a job, and in my mind, I knew I was. N I, I just concentrated on my career. Like was, nobody cares. So yes. you might as well just go to books and at exactly. least books don't talk. Exactly. And uh, they don't I, look at people badly. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And they don't look at you and say this is not our blood. And don't read know? me anymore. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. all along I'm growing up thinking um, there's something wrong with me mm. because how come even the children don't want wow. to play with me? And yeah. I'm thinking I'm this very ugly girl or there's something. Actually, I even used to fear looking at mirrors because I'm thinking I'm going to, to look at a mirror and see something so bad because... Are you see, You thought yes. you were ugly? Yes, I thought I was ugly because Can you, when, you're, a liar. when you're growing up, and no one wants to play with you yeah. and the adults who are supposed to know better they hate you and you're only a child you don't even know why they hate you and then you come to learn later that they hate you because you were not born into that family you mm, came with you your came mother into the family yes yeah and the minute i learned that um i purposed that the minute I got a chance to leave this family, I was going to leave this go. family. And actually, mm. I left home after high school. <laughs> wow. wow. Yes, I became a, a hustler after high school. Yeah. Um, God provided, opened ways for me to go to, to the university, to the college. Yeah. But wait a minute, Winnie. Yes. Do you know rejection yes. actually causes children to react in a very, very different way? It's like you lock up. Yes. You put a wall on yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't want to be reached out to. Yes. It's not that you don't want for people to love on you and to show you, you yes. know, yes. Uh, to reach out. Yes. But you, you're so scared of because you've, you've already been rejected. Yes. So you're so scared of being hurt and you exactly. put a wall. Exactly. So many times, listen, many times when you put that wall, it looks like everybody else doesn't like you. Yes. But really, you've mm -hmm. put a wall. It's true. Like if somebody Very maybe true. tries to come in and reach out to you and talk to you, you're already like... What do you want? Me, I'm exactly. eight. Uh, My name is eight. Yes. Actually, you meet good people, but the first thing you ask yourself, so what's the catch? Yeah. I mean, so what are you after? Because sincerely, you can't be loving me. If, if not, my family it's, doesn't it's, love yes. me. Who are you to come and love me? Exactly. Yeah. And even, you know, my relationship with men, mm. that is what it was all about. Mm. I mean, I sense, I mean, if, if we are friends and I sense that something is going to happen, mm -hmm. I'm going to dump you before, before you even think of dumping me. <laughs> so actually, to tell you the truth, I have never been dumped by a man. <laughs> You've been the dumper. Yes. You. <laughs> I sense it, the kidogo, the kidogo less, you know, yeah, rejection, yeah. Yes. and I'm done with you. Mm. So that is how it was. Uh, but all along, even when I was dating men, yeah. I knew my dating was never going to end up in marriage. Because wow. in my mind, I had made up my mind. I'm never going to get married. Yeah. I have watched, I have watched uh, my close relatives, you know, women die of age. These are women who wake up early to go work and everything. Mm. At the end of the day, yeah. their husbands are bringing home AIDS. You mm. know, I have watched relatives being yeah. beaten by their husbands. Yeah. And I'm thinking, who needs a man? I don't need a man. And yeah. that is why after college, mm. I purposed to just go after my career. I was, I just became so career oriented. I was yeah. a workaholic. Yeah. I, I was, I would be in the office at seven. I'm leaving the office at 10. I, I don't yeah. have a life. I mean, I, 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 at some point I was not even going to church because um, I'm working on Sundays mm -hmm. so that on Saturdays I can go to college. So wow. my life was about wow. work, books, work books, and and books, and more books, and work, and books, and, 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 and
Exactly. Oh my goodness, how boring. <laughs> Should not be real. Yes. Can it you was know boring. I mean, really? And yeah. actually, you know, you're making money yeah. and actually you never get to enjoy that money yeah. because somehow it's your family that enjoys the money because mm. someone will get sick or something will happen back at home mm. and they'll call you and you'll go to the bank and give them the money. Yet yeah. you're working so hard, but it's all because um, you've put yourself in a box. Yeah. And so uh, in the year 2008, mm -hmm. um, I'm doing well. I have a good job and yeah. everything. Yeah. And now I'm like, yes, mm. I need a family. Mm. But now in my mind, I, I need a family that doesn't include a man. I mean, who okay. needs a man? So when you I want can... a family but no responsibility? You don't <laughs> want to take care of no I, man? I, I, I don't want a man that will come and slap me because if he slaps me, there's going to be a crime scene there. I'm going to, I mean, I'm <laughs> going to get a gun and kill someone. I, I, I mean, I used to say, you can slap me once, yeah. but I'm not giving you a chance to sl slap me twice. Mm. So I was that kind of a woman. And yeah. so because of that, I said, I'm going to get a baby. Uh, I, I, I was born again. Mm. Not that I, 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 I was not, I had not backslidden or anything at okay. that time. Okay. But I told God, you have to understand. God, yeah. This is this I, is between even, me yes, and me. And and you know you've you've known how I have grown up. So please understand. This time, yeah. I'm going to leave church yeah. for a while mm -hmm. and get pregnant, and then I'll come back when the baby. <laughs> Because you're negotiating I mean, with God, eh? Yes. As you God, you know it's just for a season. Yes. I'll just leave you for now. <laughs> yes. That's and a good one. Yes. And and I told him, you you understand. Even yeah. you, you would you wouldn't want me to get married to a man. You who would is perhaps do the same if you were yes, in my shoes. Yes, if you were in my shoes. <laughs> and and I did not want any pastor asking me. So why did you get pregnant? Yeah. I mean, I have all the reasons to get pregnant. Yeah. I want to be a mother. So. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually left church uh -huh. and I did it. I, I got pregnant yes. and I was excited. Mm. I mean, this baby brought so much joy into my life. I yeah. was pregnant, I was shopping. Mm. And then you see now, because there's someone who was coming into my life, yeah. I didn't want them to, to come into my small house that didn't have nice furniture. Mm -hmm. So actually I spent more than half a million to replace the furniture in my house. Uh, okay. And <laughs> because I mean, somebody in shock, they even looking outside like, eh? <laughs> as a single yes. girl. I told myself, I have grown up in poverty. Yeah. I mean, the first time I think I saw a TV, I was in high school. Wow. That is how poor we were. Yeah. So I told myself, poverty is ending with me. My baby wow. is not coming to poverty. Wow, guys, my goodness. I hey. You say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I actually gave out all the furniture. Mm -hmm. I replaced all the furniture, the cooker, the, the, the fridge, everything. Yeah. It was a brand new house. Wow. I, I spent more than half a million just yes. shopping for my baby. I say yes. shopping for my baby because if it wasn't for the baby, I would mm -hmm. not have replaced Go anything. That. Yeah. Because anyway, I was never home. I was always in the office. Mm. But now that this special person had come into my life, yeah. I was getting a life back. Mm -hmm. And so when um, I was eight months pregnant, yes. I moved now from this one bedroom house into mm -hmm. this spacious two bedroom house wow. and I'm all excited. Yeah. And I call my brothers, they help me move. And then um, in the evening, at, uh, 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 my brothers go back home. And you were eight months pregnant? I was eight months pregnant. Yeah. I looked like I was uh, 14 months pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were carrying <laughs> four. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was uh, so huge. Yeah, and then I go, I go to bed, and um, when when I lie down, mm. um, I look at the curtain, mm. and I'm seeing there's something wrong with that bedroom curtain. Um, I, I, I'm this kind of a um, perfectionist. I, I stood and um, I, I tried to adjust the curtain, mm. and when I was doing that, I mm. slipped. I did not fall, um, so because I was just standing by the bedside, yeah. I held on to the bed. Mm -hmm. But when I did that, it was something very, very small. Yeah. Um, my baby was um, at this time very playful. Yeah. Um, she stopped playing, and now that really scared me because I'm a first-time mother. Mm -hmm. I have never had anything like this because yeah. my baby has always been. So it was an easy I, pregnancy yes, all through. Yes. Yeah. Well, save for the normal pregnancy, yes. ups and downs, yeah. it, I was I was good. Yeah. So here my baby stops playing and I, I am shocked. It's at night. I don't know who to ask. I don't know who to call. Yeah. And so um, eventually I decided to call my doctor. Did you, okay, when the baby stopped playing, yes. did you immediately suspect something could have gone wrong? No, okay. not really. I because was shaken. Because I was too soon. You yeah, just it, lifted up your hand and yeah, suddenly and you... Yeah, and then it was just something very minor. Yeah. So 
uh, even when I was calling the doctor, I wasn't so, you know, nervous. Yeah. Uh, I just needed an explanation. Mm. So I, I call the doctor and um, I tell him that uh, this happened and my baby is now not playing. Yeah. And the doctor goes ahead to explain that um, um, I, 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 he asked me, are you bleeding? And mm. I told him, actually, I'm not bleeding. And yeah. he says, if you're not bleeding, then yeah. that is okay. It means yeah. nothing has happened mm -hmm. on the on the inside mm. uh, then he goes ahead to, I, I, I tell him I'm not bleeding but uh, my baby is not playing she's yeah. usually very playful mm. at this time of, uh, of the night mm. and uh, that is when now um, the doctor tries to explain that you see uh, when, when you slipped the yeah. baby felt that, scared yes and yeah. now your baby could be hiding and mm. listening what is happening do you know, can, can, do you know what pause right there yes. do you know that's why you cannot ag agree to abortion at all. Yes. Do you know that even a little trauma on the mother yes. scares the baby? Mm. And so if, if the mother grows, uh, 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 carries the pregnancy, always yes. scared, and always, the baby it comes out a scared child. Mm. That's why a mother has to always be happy. Yes. Uh -huh. By the way, it affects yes. the child that you carry. Yes. And so you're, you're right, because yeah. when, you, when you jacked, the baby then the got baby scared. got scared because mm. they always think, oh my God, I'm going to be terminated. Oh God, yeah. something is happening. Mm. So they get really scared. So yes. abortion is really murder. It's so bad. It is. It Amen. Is. Amen. It's, it's very true. <laughs> yeah. um, so th the doctor tried to explain that your baby is somewhere hiding mm. because she felt the impact. Yeah. As much as it wasn't anything big. For your baby, that was something very big. Yeah. And so um, he goes ahead and tries to explain that if you start walking up and down, yeah. then your baby will feel that mom is not in danger. Okay. So everything is okay. Yeah. So he tells me, walk up and down the house yeah. and your baby will join you. Yeah. And so I start walking up and down and soon afterwards, my baby starts playing. Wow. And then I call the doctor again and the do uh, he says, that is very good. But just so that we can be sure, mm. make sure that tomorrow in the morning before you go to work, mm. come and we will examine you. Mm -hmm. And that is what I did the following yeah. day. I went to, uh, to the hospital mm. and they did a scan and uh, the doctor gave me a clean bill of health. He says, um, you're okay, the baby is okay, you can yeah. continue with your life and see you. I was almost due to uh, see you yeah. when the baby is coming. Yeah. And so I go back to work, I'm mm. excited, yeah. I am not in pain. Uh, life continues as normal. Yes. And then um, a few days afterwards, mm -hmm. at night, um, I get this funny feeling, you know. I call mm -hmm. it funny feeling because I'm a first-time mother. And yeah. I don't know what is labor or how it comes. Mm -hmm. So I get this, I want to go to, to, the, to, to the loo. And I go to the loo and nothing is coming out. Mm -hmm. So I go to the loo like five times. And eventually, wow. I tell my cousin yeah. who had come, yeah. by God's grace, my cousin who had, had not seen for in so many years, yeah came that day to visit me. She just said, I just felt led to come and visit you today. Wow. So I tell her, mm. I don't know what is happening. Mm. I keep going to the loo, to the bathroom, and nothing and is nothing coming is out. Coming so out. I told her, uh, let's do this. Yeah. I'll go to the loo with a blanket. Yeah. And so that, <laughs> if it comes and I'm there, I, I just do it, you know? <laughs> And then if it doesn't come, I'll just cover myself and sleep there and wait for it. Because <laughs> instead of moving up tired. and down. Now, what I did not know is that I was actually in labor. <laughs> and then, um, oh now, when God. I mentioned that, yeah. that I want to go with a blanket to the so bathroom. So you were not feeling cold, pain or anything? No, no at that time, at that no, point, that it was not pain. Wow. I, I was just feeling that there's this big poop -poo coming. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's how a baby comes. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> Mm, you feel like you really want to. I'm yeah. telling you. So I'm trying yeah. to push and nothing is coming out. And so now yeah. when I tell my cousin that I, I'm going to the bathroom with, mm. a, with a blanket, now yeah. she realizes I, something, this is serious. Yeah. So she, she's, she's half asleep. She's like, I think you're in labor. And I'm telling her, I don't think I'm in labor. Yeah. I have uh, two or three weeks to go. Mm. And then now... Um, a, a few minutes after that, yeah. now the pains, they come. Okay. And I tell her, okay, mm. I think I'm in labor. Yeah. It's not what I was thinking. Yeah. And so I am scared. I have had so many stories about, you know, giving yeah. birth. And yeah. now I'm really scared. Yeah. So I decide to call the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I tell him, uh, Dr. So-and-so, I think mm. I'm in labor. And then the doctor starts laughing and mm. tells me, really, I've always known you're a coward. That is not <laughs> labor. It's called false labor. It yeah. comes a few weeks or a few days before your due date. And I'm telling him, 
I don't think this is forced labor. Mm -hmm. The intensity of the pain, because it was, it was not getting worse by wow. the minute. Yeah. I tell him the intensity is too much. Mm. It cannot be called false. Mm. And if anything, if it's forced labor, then I want it to, to get, uh, get me at the hospital. Yes. I, I don't want to have this forced labor at home. At because home, I, yeah. I'm feeling like every bit of my bone is about to explode. Mm. And so we argue with the doctor and he's convinced that it's forced labor. Mm -hmm. And now he tells me that, Winnie, if you go to a hospital right now, mm. they will send you back home and tell yeah. you come back after a few days or after a week or so. Mm. And um, I tell him I don't mind being sent back. But right now I'm mm. not staying with this kind of pain yes. in the house. And so he, he doesn't even tell me to go to the hospital that I was supposed to have the baby because we had arranged and everything. He mm -hmm. tells me just go to the nearest clinic and have them confirm yeah. that it's it's That true you're just labor. alarmed. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so I actually, um, I, called, I called a taxi yeah. um, and this guy, he's driving. So we are going to, um, we're going to the nearest hospital mm. and I'm telling this driver, I mean, can't you drive faster than this? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already undressing in, yeah. the, in the taxi. And, <sighs> and this driver is so scared because I'm screaming and I'm telling him, oh. I'm, I'm even asking him, where did you learn driving? Oh. Can't you drive faster? Because <laughs> I'm in so much pain. Yeah. And then we get to the hospital and the, 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 the driver drops me and he takes off without even yeah. me waiting to be paid. He's even, like, this <laughs> one is crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, at that time, yeah. I'm, I'm already halfway undressed. So yeah. he doesn't even want to look at yeah. me because... <laughs> I'm convinced now the baby is going to drop any minute. Oh. And then I'm thinking now that my baby is coming out. Yeah. And then I get to the hospital mm. and I'm not taken to the maternity ward. Mm. I'm actually taken to a different uh, room where now doctors are coming and, and they are examining me. And yeah. I'm thinking, uh, I, didn't, I didn't come here for all the, what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, right now, someone is supposed to be telling me to push. That mm. is what I hear. You're told to push, push. <laughs> so I'm thinking, how you, come? You <laughs> have been told a lot. Yes. Eh? And, and that's what I had, happens, by the way. I had had enough. So I'm, I'm there and I'm thinking, OK, when are they going to tell me to push? Yeah. You know? yeah. And no one is telling me that. Yeah. Instead, doctors are coming and telling me, turn to this side. Mm. What do you feel? Mm. Turn to this side. Mm. What do you feel? And they are doing all sorts of tests and they are right. Mm. but they're not telling me anything. On the 7th of March, we are starting our School of Mentorship. It's a dynamic mentorship school that teaches you on vision, on purpose, on success, on how to walk in integrity, on how to allow God to be the center of your focus. It's an amazing school and it's for both men and women. The registration is ongoing right now. Make sure you register on time because it's a powerful, it's an awesome school. The people that have already gone to it, they love it. Call the numbers on your screen and register today. tell me that the reason according to what you have told us yeah. and how your body is looking right now mm -hmm. it seems that uh, what happened when you uh, the curtain when, when you slept mm. the uterus uh, got a small tear it separated oh. um, from the placenta yeah and so the tear was so small mm. that when you went to the hospital the mm. following day it could it not be detected. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the doctor's fault. Yeah. It's not the fault of the machine. The tear yeah. was too small. Yeah. But now when you went back to work with mm. the weight of the baby and you walking up oh. and down, the tear became bigger and bigger until now the night that you went into labor. Mm. That time that you went into labor, your placenta ruptured. Oh. And your mm. baby suffocated. Mm. Oh. And so So the the placenta had it, it, torn and separated? It separated. So that time I went into labor, the whole thing just fell apart. And I mean, now my baby was sort of like suspended inside me. My baby and oh. I were no longer one. Mm. My baby became an object that was just inside oh. my tummy. And that is why every time I moved, there was so much pain. Because it's like a big ball 
floating inside. I mean, every time I go like this now, the thing is oh, lying on my God. organs and there's so much pain. Mm. I, I, I asked them, so how is my baby? Mm. And they told me that um, right now we are, we, we are actually fighting for your life. Your baby is not our patient anymore. And when you're told that your baby is, our, my baby was not um, um, their patient anymore, that's just a nice way of telling me that my baby is dead. And um, I couldn't process that. Did you realize that at that time? Did you pick it immediately? No, no, no I did not. Yeah, I mean, you just thought, well, there's no way my baby can be dead. Yeah, I mean, if my baby is dead, then yeah. I'm also dead. And because I'm, I'm, I'm still alive, then my baby is alive. Mm. At that time, my system could not process uh, mm. such information. Yeah. And so I was in denial for mm. a long time. The, mm. the, yet the doctors kept telling me, Winnie, you have to calm down mm. because now you've been bleeding for a whole week. Yeah. And you have very little blood left. Actually, you, we are giving, we, you have a few hours left to live. So all that time I was w wondering why the doctors were coming and doing this and that. They mm. were organizing for a blood transfusion. Mm. And then guess what blood group I am? Mm blood group O. I mean it's the one blood group they are trying to get from other hospitals and and then they are saying even whatever we have in mm. the in the blood bank we cannot use it because what you need is blood that is going to be transfused right now yeah because you have a few hours to live so that blood has, has to be donated screened, no. donated now and screened and transfused and you know all that information, it's not getting into my head. Yeah. I mean... Uh, You're thinking my baby. Yes, my baby. Yeah. So what, what, what else are you telling me? Mm. And then they start telling me, Winnie, you have to calm down because now your blood pressure is going high and whatever little blood is left is being pumped out at a very fast uh, rate. Mm. And I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, you've just told me my baby is dead. Why yeah. are you trying to save me? And uh, they wheeled me to the ETA. And now uh, the story, as I tell, uh, it's what now I am told happened mm. in the in the theater. The minute they cut me open, there was so much blood that mm. gushed out like a fountain because I've been bleeding for a whole week and the mm. blood is not coming out. So it's just been accumulating in oh. my stomach. And now after I, I, the, the accident, now it even became worse. And then the high blood wow. pressure, it was being pumped out so hard. So when they cut me open, it was like a fountain. Like letting out a gash. Yes. And then when the doctors saw that, they said, this one is as good as dead. There's no way anyone can lose this amount of blood and, and survive. Yeah. So even as they were removing the baby, mm. they had already given up on me. Mm. They, had, they already knew that I was not going to wake up from that surgery table. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they removed the baby and they, they also removed my uterus because it was damaged. And so they are just about to throw my uterus in the dustbin. And then one doctor says, no, mm -hmm. don't throw away that uterus. We may be doctors. This girl has lost so much blood, mm. but she's still alive and we are not God. Return her uterus. Oh, oh. So, Oh my God, oh my God. They folded my uterus like a chapati. You know, the way you fold a chapati and you put a fork inside. You know, so that is how they folded the, 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 the uterus because they didn't have time uh, to, to return it put nicely. Put it in an the way. manner. Exactly. Hey. And so my God. they are thinking if we have to save this girl. We fold it quickly fold and it. return. It, they actually, they stuffed the uterus they inside me. And now I can show now. And so oh my God. most of them left that room thinking that she's gone. Yeah. And then I don't know for how long I was asleep, but I woke up. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Mm. Mm. I woke up. Oh. I woke up. I didn't know where I was. I had lost my memory. And so I think, yay, I gave birth. And so the nurse comes in and I'm Aww. like, the nurse comes in and mm. I'm like, who is my mm. baby? Mm. When can I see my baby? This next day, that's when I started registering. Mm. When, um, when I heard now babies crying and I realized actually I don't have a baby here. Mm. And I'm hearing babies in other rooms and yeah. I'm hearing nurses saying, oh, wake up, you know, you need to clean your baby. What? And I'm thinking, okay, 
I think this is for real. Yeah. I don't have my baby. Mm. And then my mom comes um, comes to me and tells me that we need we need to sign uh, we need to um, bury the baby and everything. We need to sign papers. Mm. And I'm telling her, you're not burying, you're not burying anyone because I still have business to do with God. Mm. That I'm, I'm so angry with God and I'm telling God, mm. there's no way I'm walking out of this hospital without my baby. Mm. If you have done it in the past, you have you been can able do it to again. raise mm. a dead people. Yeah. I'm believing you to raise my baby mm. because if this baby is dead, mm. I'm dead also. Mm. There's no way I'm going to that house knowing that every piece of furniture, everything I have bought in that house, mm. I have bought because of that baby. And you expect me to go back to that house. Everything in that house is a reminder mm. of this joy that came to my life. And then I just called my mom and I asked her. I, I just told her, I know you never saw my baby. You, I know no one knew my baby. Mm. I'm the only one who felt my baby. Mm. But my, can my baby be accorded the same respect a mm. grown-up would be accorded? Mm. Don't take my baby as a stillbirth. Can mm. you perform a, a, a proper, service? Yeah. A, proper funeral service mm. for my baby mm. because people may not have seen her mm. but I have felt her. Mm. Mm. I have felt her move mm. I have sung for her mm. for me she was as good as living mm. with me yeah and so my my mom said that we will do that mm. we will give your daughter proper service mm. and that is what happened I was not able to go for the service but um, mm. they my whole family when it was uh, a, proper a proper service. Yeah. And so the healing process started. Mm. It was now my time to really accept that my baby was gone. Yeah. It was hard. It took time. Mm. Mm. I actually remember at some point I was so suicidal. Mm. If I had an opportunity, you could have done I it. would have committed suicide. Oh. It's just that I didn't have an opportunity. Mm. I, I remember one girl, I woke up one morning, and this girl that was, I, I, she was rubbing my, my hand, mm. and, and I asked her, I looked at her, first of all, because of the memory loss. Mm. I don't want to, you know, to jump into conclusions. So yeah. I'm trying to study her. Mm. Do I know her? Is she mm. a family member? Is she a friend? And I'm like, I can't trace her, her, her face Because you actually all. lost your memory I was, you know, yeah. it was like being in a haze, uh -huh. you know? Uh, and um, so I asked her, who are you? Mm. And she says, actually, I work here at the hospital mm. and I work in the accounts department. Yeah. And by coming to see you, mm. I'm risking my job mm. because the accounts department is not supposed to interact with customers mm -hmm. in the world. And so I asked her, so why are you risking your job coming to see me? Mm. And she's like, because when we were going home mm. the other day, we were all forced to donate blood because you needed blood. Mm. And judging by what the doctors were saying, mm. you were going to die. Mm. They didn't have any hope that you would survive. Yeah. And so I come in this morning and I hear that you did not die. Mm. I had to come and witness for myself. Wow. wow. And so it now started dawning on me mm. how big a miracle this was. Wow. Yeah. And. Um, one of the ladies that was in the theater when mm. I was being operated on, she's the one who told us what went on in there. Mm. And then she told my mother that um, the reason doctors agreed to take me to theater was so that my baby and I could be separated mm. and then we are buried in separate graves. They did not want us buried wow. in the same grave. Wow. That is the reason they Agreed. agreed to take you yes. to theater. They but were they so had sure you were up. dying. Yes, they yeah. had given up even before I went to theater. Yeah. And so for them to see that I was alive, mm. it was a big, big miracle. Mm. And now the day I went back, uh, I, w I was to go back home, the, the main doctor came to me and said, your uterus, mm. we are not sure if it will ever be able to carry another baby. Wow. It was too badly damaged. Yes. Yeah. But you see, at that point, mm. 
It really didn't matter. You don't even care. Who cares? Who, who wants, wants who even wants children? I mean, he gives yeah. and he takes. So yeah. who, who wants his babies? Yeah. I told him. You know now my mother was telling me. Oh, you, you were know, that God mad is, with God. I was so mad. I, my mother was that telling me, amazing. you'll get you'll get other babies. And I, I remember telling my mother, mm. okay, go tell that God of yours. Mm. I don't want his babies. He can keep his babies or give his babies to women who want babies. Mm. He has taken this one. Yeah. I have begged him to resurrect this one. He mm. has refused. Mm. So tell him to keep those others. You I divorced have, him. I, yes. I, I told him, I'm not even going back to church. Can you imagine? <laughs> I left church to get pregnant. Yeah. And now, imagine what I, I'll go through when I go yeah. back to church. I told him, you know what? Yeah. I'm done keep with it. you. Keep it. Yeah. And people oh would tell God. me about uh, God. Father, the things you see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he really loves us. Yeah, he the, does. The, the oh. things I told him at that point, yeah. I feel so embarrassed. I can't even speak about mm. them. I, people would come and preach in my house, and I'm thinking, what is wrong with these yeah, people? Yeah, what are they saying? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and so I was, I was set for life. Mm. I was going back to, to work. Mm. And then guess what happens? Mm -hmm. I lose my job. Uh oh and I'm like, uh -oh. okay, I lose my job. Did I say all things work together for good? <laughs> and it's not me who said ah. it, it's the word. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay. And you're wondering, okay, I've just lost a baby. Now I've lost a job. Lost God, okay, you know, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, um, I'll get healed and I'll, I'll, I'll get other jobs. Yeah. And so, you know what, come, what happens when you lose a job? Yeah. You start now using your savings. But now I didn't even have the savings. I lost mm. my savings. I during that period yeah. I was conned. I mean, it's something I can't. I don't even want to talk about. Mm. But I lost more than um, six hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. And uh, so in, in less than two months, I've lost my baby. Mm. I have lost my job. And, and a I lot have lost of money. Six hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. And I also lost my plot. Mm. I had a plot. So here I am without nothing. Yeah. And now the friends that used to come to my house mm. and party and everything, mm. I mean, they of all course. run no away because there. there's they no money. They came for the party. Yet, now there's uh, no party, please. Winning. So here. So, <laughs> <yourself. laughs> you know, you know at, some yourself point, <laughs> at some point, I forgot the, my phone's ringtone mm. because uh, no one used to call me. Mm. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot how my, my, my phone rings. Yeah. Because, you know, there was that time when I lost the baby and people came and actually lived in my house. Mm. And then after a month, of course, they assumed, okay, she's good to she's go. She's okay. She's yeah. okay. And they all left. Mm. My mom went back to her house, my cousin, they all went back. Yeah. And I'm left alone. Mm. So that is uh, that, that was my turning point. Uh -huh. I, I usually tell people that my coming back to God was not because I really wanted it. Mm. At that point, I did not want anything to do with God. But my coming back to God was actually because I did have an option. It was either God or God. I mean, when you don't God, have he anyone. Amazes <laughs> <me>. <laughs> he amazes me. Because I'm yeah. telling you, once you've tasted God yes. and you've been saved, it doesn't exactly. matter where you go. Yes, he will. You'll always, you will always even crawl back. It's and tell him, okay, I'm kuja. Yes. <laughs> Actually, that's what, I, that's what I did. And I, I started asking him. So I told him, okay, so now what do you want with me? Yeah. And that is when I went back um, to prayer and worship. Uh -huh. And I would spend so much time in yeah. just worship a whole wow. day, just crying before God. Wow. And this time I was not even accusing him of being a murderer or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this time I was just loving on him. I yeah. was not even telling him my problems. Yeah. And I started loving God and, mm. and I was restored. Yeah. And um, as for, for the bit of... Uh, uh, you know, marriage and everything. Mm. I still didn't know. You know, I had never seen a man that I could say I would want a husband like that mm. or I would want a man like that. Yeah. I didn't know what a good man was because all the men I saw were bad. Mm. And so I told God, I don't know what you have in store for me. Yeah. So actually, I, have ne I, ne I tell people I never prayed for a husband. Mm. God must have performed a major heart surgery mm. on me mm. because I fell in love. Oh, I fell in love come after on, that. somebody. <laughs> come on, somebody. So you met this man and fell in love? I fell in love. Yeah. And, uh, at first, I, I didn't even know I was in love. Yeah. At first, <laughs> <laughs> or I was in denial. You know, I was trying to be a hardcore. You yeah. know, you can't make me fall in love with you. I'm yeah. hardcore. <laughs> 
<laughs> so at first it was just fellowship, mm. you know. I, I, I'm, when this guy proposed and uh, uh, he knows my story and I'm telling him, mm. uh, you know my story. Yeah. You know I may not be able to have children. Yeah. You know this and that. Mm. And he's like, it's okay, we'll adopt. It's okay, whatever. You know, but he, he has faith. He says he has faith that we'll have children. He has faith that God is going to heal me. Mm. And so I see this guy is actually serious. He's, yeah. he's serious about the proposal. Yeah. And so I go, I go back and I, to my house and I tell God. And this time I'm just telling God because actually I'm sort of like testing him. Mm. Because I know he's not going to do it anyway. So that will give me another escape <laughs> from marriage. So I tell God. Actually, I've never said this yeah. on air. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying it for the first time. So I tell God, um, if you really want me to marry that man, mm. don't send me an angel. Don't send me a pastor. Mm. I want you to come yourself. Mm. And how am I going to know that it's you, God? Mm. So I tell oh, him, wow. I tell God, there's a time you wrote on a wall. Yeah. I have read that story in the Bible. Can yes. you do it a second time? Mm. So uh, uh, jokingly, mm. I told, at, at this point, you know, I, I really had a good rapport with God. Yeah. You know, the way you're just you talking. You strong. To, yes, very strong. <laughs> and I'm telling God, you can choose my sitting room yeah. or my kitchen wall. Whichever wall you want to write on. <laughs> <laughs> All I need is a confirmation that yeah. you want me to marry this man. Yes. And then you know, the, there's this painting that I had. Mm. Um, I, I had bought when I came to Nairobi. Mm. And I kept moving with that painting. It was old. Mm. I, I kept moving with it from house to one house to another. Yeah. And when I could replace other things, mm. this painting, I just kept it. Mm. And so this one week, every time I come to the house, yeah. God is drawing me to the painting. Mm. And I'm thinking, painting, mm. uh, maybe it's too old. I, yeah. I need to replace it. Yeah. And then I remember, actually, I told God to write on the wall. Mm. And now I start thinking, okay, I think God is serious about this thing. Mm. So now I'm like, I don't even, th it's a good painting, mm. but I don't know what it is. You know those famous buildings, mm. but you don't exactly know which building it is. And um, I can't Google a building unless yeah. I know its name. Yes. So... I'm like, okay, I can't draw that building on Google and mm. say such. Mm. Um, so I just say, for it to be a painting, it mm. has to be a very famous building. Yeah. So I Google famous buildings in the world. Mm. And I say, Google picture. Mm. And it's among the 20 photos that come up on the, 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 the screen. Mm. And that building is in Sydney, Australia. And my husband is from Australia. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling God, okay, you are serious about writing on my wall. So I go back to my fiance, uh, my boyfriend, mm. and I tell him, yeah, I'll get married. <laughs> <laughs> and now to cut a long story short, mm. uh, we got married. Though a lot of we've have we've, we have come to uh, we have come we've had to overcome a lot of ups and downs, yeah. up and downs that most marriages go through, mm -hmm. especially before the wedding day. Yes. You know, people objecting and this and that, a lot of racism mm -hmm. uh, to a point I wanted to, to really cancel the wedding because mm. there, were, there were too many insults because of my skin color, me getting okay. married to Amzungu. There was so much, um, you know, again, rejection. Yeah. But we, we, we stayed strong. But not between you and him, just no, the, the we other were, people. Actually, he ah, said, he right. said, I'd so rather leave my family <laughs> and, and keep you. Yeah. So he actually came. Oh, he said he'd rather he said leave his family and keep you. Yeah. He, he left his family oh. and came. <laughs> and, um, wow. and, eh. and God has proved to be so true to his promises. Yeah. Because after our wedding, mm. he started speaking to us about our baby. And that time we were not even expectant. Yeah. He started speaking to us about our baby. Mm. He gave us the date that our baby would come. Yeah. After that we conceived and he gave us the name of our baby. <laughs> Even before we knew it was a boy and and, uh, and he just gave us the name and we knew. We started shopping for baby. What baby did you boys. call him? Israel. Before? That, yes. That is the name God gave us. Oh my. And yeah. so God has been so awesome to, to us. Amen. Today, the people that were spreading rumors yes. on the internet and insulting me and saying that I'm barren, that I'm going to waste his life, that um, I wrote a, a book 
to, to become famous and that I will never be a mother, today they have nothing to say. Oh my God. Because they, so today, I don't even. Have a, today, <laughs> today, yes. You have a husband that loves you? Exactly. So, so that, that, that void was covered? Yes. Because God gave you a husband that's crazy about you? And one that cooks. Oh I don't God. even go to the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. And on top of that, gave yes. you a beautiful baby called Israel. Israel. And I know others are on the way. On the way. Isn't, oh my God. Isn't God amazing? Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. You better yes. give your neighbor a high five. Yes. And tell them my own will come. My testimony is coming. Yes. Prophesy that your testimony is coming. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Your testimony is on the way. Yes. And all of you who are watching us on air, guess what? Your testimony is on the way. Yes. So it doesn't matter how down you are. Mm. It doesn't matter what the enemy has placed on your on your on your on your hands. Let me yes. tell you. God is going to turn it around for your good. Yes. Right now it looks bad. It looks horrible. It looks like you can't even be a story. But guess what? Yes. They're going to read about you. They're oh, yes. going to watch you. And they're going to say, wow, look what the Lord has, has done. done. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know what's beautiful? Yes. Is that before we even close the show, the husband is here. Yes. Why don't you tell <laughs> We're going to welcome um, the husband and the baby. <laughs> You better give it up for them real good. Yes. Oh, wow. And so, the, hello, how are you? Yeah? So this is the woman that you're crazy about. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, oh, he says he loves us so, so, so much. And this is Israel. He looks just like you. So you better now do another one that looks like him. <laughs> yes. Wow, can I hold him? Yes. Now this is Israel. And then you know what? All he does is smile. Hey, my baby. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hey. <laughs> and then you'll drink some milk. Yes. Yes, he <laughs> wants They're just the cutest. Give it up for Jesus. <laughs> As we all know, marriages are under attack. I tell you, the institution of marriage has been hit by the enemy. But we know that he that began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. The devil cannot have his way. We are going to have a couple's meeting on the 22nd of March. It's going to be free of charge. Wherever you are, if you're listening right now, listen. Invite couple friends and make sure you come to this meeting. My husband and I are going to be speaking to you on how to sustain your marriage and what it is that you need to do. We're going to talk about everything pertaining to a married couple and what they need to enjoy and how they can cause their marriage to sizzle no matter what the enemy tries. We're going to make it a beautiful day, so make sure you come. Remember again, it's free of charge on 22nd of March. Be there. We can do to stop what God has for you. There's nothing the enemy can do to stop what God has for you. Oh